now we're ready to actually solve this problem. Let's figure out what the E would be at these concentrations. What should we plug in for E standard? Yeah, it's easy to start losing all our work here, but we got 1.1 volts. And how about for R? And for T, all right, and then the denominator here we can put in two. Mm -hmm. and okay, and then how about for Q? Um, oh, uh, 5.83 times 10 to the negative 1. Q? Oh, I think I got quite a bit. We said that this is what Q is going to look like here, zinc concentration over copper. And here's the zinc and the copper concentrations I gave you. Notice then that you can't use this until you've written the overall equation. Remember that that didn't come just from the half reactions. We have to combine the half reactions. And here's another step that you have to go through to solve these types of problems. Many students realize that they need to know the half reactions, but they might not realize that they need the overall reaction so that they can figure out what Q is going to be. Right. You might as well get a number. Uh, for this, again, you could do this in one step on your calculator as long as you put parentheses to show that this is one numerator and this is one denominator and this is one log. Or you might want to split those into separate steps if you feel more comfortable with that. you certainly want to practice on your own because it would be a shame to set the problem up right and then lose points because of calculator stuff and that yeah. just takes some practice to work that out. Okay, so what are the equations we have here? Here's the equation that relates all the standardized values. Standardized G, standardized E, and K is kind of in a sense a standardized value as well. And then you also need something that you can use to figure out the actual values at the actual concentrations. Well, here's how we figure out the actual E at the actual concentrations based on the actual Q at the actual concentrations. But you can't use this until you know the standard E anyway. So these oftentimes have to go together with each other. Okay, so and we talked about how to get the N, and the Q comes from the overall equation. So one thing we should be doing today is making up a kind of a cheat sheet of the equations that you need to memorize for the, the test is just coming up in a couple days, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, well, this is a pretty complicated equation, but maybe you're expected to have this memorized. So anyway, that should be on your cheat sheet of key equations. Um, and the other thing that we would ask, I guess we won't do a full problem on that to save time, but you might have to figure out the actual delta G instead of the standard. So there's a similar equation for that. Let's see if I can remember that. Now again, as the reaction goes forward, is Q getting bigger or smaller? And is the reaction becoming more or less favorable? Less favorable. So should delta G be moving to the right or left on the number line? Um, to the right. Towards the positive. So as the reaction goes forward, are Q and delta G moving in the same direction or opposite directions? What did we, what did we work oh, out? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Same direction. Q is move, getting bigger because we're moving forward, right. and delta G is moving to the right on the number line because that's less favorable. So should this be a plus or a minus? Are these directly or inversely related? Directly. So this was a negative, but this was a positive. Well, that makes sense because we know that the sign of E has the opposite meaning to the sign of delta G. All right, so again, we wouldn't expect to be able to derive this formula, but we should at least be able to derive this sign. So again, this is just telling us that the further forward the reaction has become, the less spontaneous the reaction becomes, the more positive delta G becomes. So here's the equations that you should have in your notes. These equations will cover really a lot of the types of problems that you're likely to see. Uh, you might put this in your notes too. 
Um, this also tells us how to, uh, this, this equation works for both regular G and standard, regular and standard. But anyway, here's the, the key equations that we've seen. And we've seen all the work that has to go into uh, calculating all those. All right, that seems like just about all the different types of questions that you could be asked about this type of galvanic cell. So there's lots of different things that could go in there. Notice that to get started, you have to figure out, use the half reactions to figure out who's the cathode and who's the anode and, and, write, uh, and write that down. The key thing here is to try, try not to skip steps. So don't try to just go straight to the final answer, but set it up the kind of the way I've set it up on the board with all the half reactions and all the, um, the regular, all the, the cell potentials. 